Hello and welcome to WASP 3D Feature Tutorials. The skeletal animation feature allows the use of motion capture datasets, in real time. Motion capture sequences can be dynamically applied as behaviors on 3D models, to recreate life-like simulations in news re-enacting, sports analysis, or game shows. This feature, eliminates the need to bake a single animation to a 3D model, thus reducing the load on the GPU, and making it possible to puppeteer a 3D model by applying a variety of motion capture data sets in real time. In this tutorial we shall cover topics such as, skeletal data entry application, skeletal add-in, skeletal animation control actions like play and stop, working with multiple animations, and mesh clone. Firstly, open Skeletal Animation Data Entry Application. Right-click on Animation Categories, to create a new category folder. Now, define name. Click Replace button, to import or replace Skeletal Mesh. We now browse for 3D Mesh. Adjust the position for a clear view. Then, click Import FBX button, to import animation file. Select the animation. This dialog box will show the bone mapping. Now, drag and drop animation to the grid below. Double click to load the animation for preview, and press start to check the animation. Then, press F2 to rename. Delete the animation once added, and import next animation. Click OK, if the bones are mapped properly. Drag animation to grid, and rename. Similarly, import the third animation. Now, check Infinite Radio button, to see the Loop Able animations. Save changes. Now, import mesh. Browse for 3D mesh. Then, set position as desired. Add to render texture.
Now, press F8 to go to Variable Sheet. Click on Skeletal Add-in icon. Animation added in Data Entry application will show up here. Select Animation and click Add. Press Finish when done. Added animation, will appear in Motion's drop-down list of the skeletal animation control action. Press F10 to go to Action Sets, and right-click to create a new action set. Next, go to Actions, select Skeletal Animation, and then play or press All. We will add a stop skeletal animation before playing the animation. Select the mesh as target. Then, select Stretch Motion from the list, and check on Retain Transformation. Next, add play control. Again, select mesh as target. Start frame as 0 and end frame as 115, that means, total stretch animation is 115 frames. We are keeping character loop to 1 as of now. Now, play template and hit action set to see animation. Now, we go back to play control, and see some more properties. We are changing character loop to 4, which means the animation will play 4 times. Blend frames, blends the animation between two motions. Users can also increase or decrease the speed of animations. We will create another action set for run animation. Here, we add stop, for run motion. Next, add play control for playing run animation. We are changing character loop to infinite. We didn't select the right motion, let's go back and update the motion. Update motion to run in both control actions. As we can notice, it's still not playing correctly. The reason is that we didn't stop stretch animation before applying run animation. Please note, that we must stop any pre-applied skeletal animations, before we apply a new one. 
As per the example above, we are playing run animation, but it won't play unless we stop stretching animation. Now, go to run action set, and add stop key for stretch animation, before play command. Play scene and check action set. Similarly, we would need to add stop for run, in the stretch action set. Play the scene and check both the animations. Right click on the player and clone. Please note to always clone the mesh, to save render and load time of the template. Users can apply different textures and motions on a cloned mesh. Now, we will change target in control actions, to check. Browse a new texture for the player. Copy the material, and change player texture. Clone feature, allows users to create multiple meshes, and keeps render and load time in control. It is very useful when we create scenes for match analysis, where we might need up to 22 players.